Honda is expected to announce a multi-billion dollar deal to assemble electric vehicles in Ontario this week. CBC News can confirm this news that was first reported by Bloomberg. And so too, it seems, can the Ontario Premier. As Doug Ford is teasing a deal, he says will be the largest deal in Canadian history. We've attracted over $28 billion in auto and EV battery investments. And folks, stay tuned. So we're becoming kind of the, the place of choice in the world for uh, manufacturing to look uh, at producing uh, to serve the North American market. I have every confidence we're going to see the magnetic pull of those t tax credits bringing more significant investment. Okay, other government sources, not the three you saw there on the screen. They say the announcement is set to be made Thursday at Honda's plant in Allison, Ontario. And the details of government subsidies for the project are expected at that point. We're going to talk about all of that now with the power panel. Lisa Raitt is a former Conservative cabinet minister. Brad Levine is a former communications director for the NDP. Rob Benzi is the Queen's Park Bureau Chief for the Toronto Star. And here with me in studio, Vandana Cotter is a former advisor to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. So, Vandana, uh, nobody is denying uh, what seems like pre you know, a pretty good scoop uh, by my colleague Brian Platt today uh, from Bloomberg that, that this was coming and it is going to happen. What, what's your reaction to this is that they've landed Honda, not just to, it, it's, it's like three stages, it seems like it's, it's the whole ball of wax here. Yeah, I think this is great news for the government. I think you've seen a record number of investments in the auto sector. And I think, you know, having remembered, you know, some tougher times to see the revival is quite great. And I think, you know, what Francois Philippe, uh, Mr. Champagne said about, you know, bringing Canada being a place where people want to invest and want to create good, high paying jobs that also create spin off jobs is just good for the government and it comes off a successful budget. So, uh, Lisa, I know we spoke on Budget Day. One of the criticisms of this budget uh, from the business community is that there wasn't really a lot in it. Uh, to drive growth. And when I was asking that question inside the briefings budget day, finance officials kept pointing me to the electric vehicle tax credit that they had in there. And it seems like we are seeing uh, what that was designed to accomplish. What do you make of this today? Hey, look, it's a great announcement for Alliston, Ontario. It's a great announcement for whoever wins in Quebec as well. Um, I think uh, out west, they're probably looking at it and saying, well, what about us? Because it's more than just EVs in the country. But I think it's fair that Doug Ford took a victory lap this morning. He's at the First Nations Major Projects Coalition Conference in Toronto, and he couldn't wait to tell everybody that he had this giant deal. So it's good on them. Uh, I hope it all comes to fruition. I hope that we are producing lots and lots of EVs and, and lots of people are buying them. Uh, Brad, what, what's your sense of this? The last time EVs were in the news, it was the delay in the Ford plants refurbishing in Oakville, Ontario, uh, until 2027, pushing it out past you know, 2025 when it was supposed to start building electric vehicles. Now I know Honda, it, it, this is a multi-stage uh, manufacturing process they've landed here and it's sort of a, a big fish they were pretty keen to get. Yeah, no question. And before uh, we jump in, uh, David, uh, just to uh, declare uh, Council of Public Affairs works with Toyota in Ontario and okay. uh, throughout Western Canada at the federal level as well. So I just wanted to mention that as well. Appreciate um, that. Th there's no question here that obviously uh, the, the notion of the tax credit, uh, this particular tax credit, uh, was obviously in the works for many times because a company the size of Honda wouldn't make this decision within the last uh, seven to ten days since the, since the budget was announced. So obviously there's been lots of uh, behind the scenes uh, conversation. Without question, and we have to remember where these incentives that these companies appear to be, um, you know, making announcements around. This is now uh, the fourth uh, announcement uh, that touches on the EV uh, sector in response to Biden's uh, anti-inflationary uh, act. Um, clearly, uh, what we're seeing is we're returning to an era where, without massive uh, incentives by the government, both the federal as well as the provincial governments. Uh, you know, a global capital is not going anywhere. It looks as though that 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 the bundle of uh, tax credits uh, and other incentives that the on government of Ontario, government of Canada, are putting together is attracting a tremendous uh, uh, amount of capital. The question is going to be in the details. Obviously, the, the announcement is going to be Thursday, worst kept secret in in Canada today. Uh, but nonetheless. Things like, you know, labor. The last time we had uh, that, uh, another EV announcement uh, uh, that, that dealt in this sector, you know, a lot of questions about who is going to be building uh, these facilities and bringing in temporary foreign workers uh, from overseas. So lots right. of still, there's 
lots of details to still hammer out to see what the economic impact will be uh, for the regions affected here in Ontario. So, so Benzie, for people who don't have a copy of the federal budget in front of them, uh, or if you do, turn to page 181, because that's where the new EV supply chain investment tax credit is. And, and it's a 10% uh, electric vehicle supply chain investment tax credit on the cost of buildings used in key segments of the EV supply chain. So that's vehicle assembly, battery production, and cathode active material production. So it sounds like this will qualify, hit all three of those criteria to qualify for this. What's the latest you have on this uh, from Queen's Park? What's your sense of this one? Well, and David, there will, all, there will also be provincial incentives atop mm -hmm. those federal incentives. Uh, and this is not a surprise in the sense that this is what happened with Stellantis. Remember, the Stellantis deal, uh, after Volkswagen was signed uh, with the federal government and the provincial government here in Ontario, uh, Volkswagen's $7 billion facility in um, St. Thomas, uh, Stellantis, which had previously announced its $5 billion facility in Windsor wanted more money, and uh, the provincial government and federal government had to sweeten the pot, specifically the provincial government, which really uh, was very concerned. Uh, Premier Doug Ford and, and Vic Fidelli, the ec economic development minister, were very worried that Stellantis might uh, withdraw from Canada altogether, which this is, that's the old Chrysler uh, of Canada. So that's a, that would be a huge uh, problem. So they, they, they've put this money forward in the form of tax credits. And they, they say, look, this isn't traditional corporate welfare, they argue, because if these companies don't produce anything, they won't get any tax credits. So it's, it's in, in Honda's interest, in Volkswagen's interest, in Stellantis' interest, and others to, to actually manufacture something in Ontario. And this Honda yeah. deal uh, later this week is actually, I mean, Doug Ford couldn't contain himself this morning talking about it without mentioning the word Honda by name. Um, but it's it's really significant because this is vehicle assembly. This isn't just building EV batteries. So, and this is the factory that is, that builds Honda Civics and Honda CRVs. It's a very important uh, economic driver in Ontario. This factory, uh, this facility, employs thousands of workers and will employ thousands more uh, once it's uh, up and running as a giga factory. Yeah, it's important to point out there is money gone in uh, through strategic investment funds uh, for subsidies to build the facilities, but really the big money will come if the yeah. batteries are built here and sold. They have to be built and sold. So, so Vandana, this comes after sort of a week of criticism uh, from the business community about the budget, that there, there's not enough in here for growth, There's uh, the capital gains taxes are going to deter investment and, 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 and you know drive uh, innovation and job creation away. How does this announcement now factor into that political conversation, do you think? I think it shows that they're working hard to show that Canada's open for business and that they are going to drive economic growth. I think this is actually a really good proof point to them for them to point to something and say people are still going to invest in Canada, people are going to invest in Ontario, and we're going to get good paying jobs and jobs of the future that you know really supports the future economy, not only just the auto sector, but EVs in general. Um, and we talked about how it's not just about um, the government has to implement something important that's not only just about good jobs, but cost of living is also going to be affected by do you have a good paying job? Mm -hmm. And thinking about that, the spin-off effects in the local economy is going to be really important. So I think that really helps with that narrative rightly after the budget. Lisa, what's your sense on this? I mean, the, the tech sector is <clears throat> mad at them. Uh, incorporated family doctors are mad at them because of these tax changes. Uh, this, uh, I, I can't imagine anyone who wants to work on a Honda plant is going to be mad at them over this. But uh, how do you think it helps them in the larger narrative at play here? Oh, is Lisa frozen? She's either very disciplined and not taking the bait on that question or we've got a connection <laughs> issue. I'm going to go with the connection issue. Uh, uh, Brad, uh, how, how about you on that one? Uh, same question to you. Uh, well, I was, I, was, I was waiting for Lisa's reply so that I could answer <laughs> to her back. Yeah. But listen, I mean, any time that you have an economic strategy that is going to focus in on one uh, sector, uh, other sectors may say, well, what about us? This is at least right. point earlier about, yeah. about uh, folks in, in Western Canada. Uh, and that's always going to be a tension the minute that you create an incentive. And th now, this electric vehicle uh, investment uh, tax credit is clearly specific for EVs, but it's also very specific as to what is expected from a company that wishes to enjoy that tax credit, as opposed to just saying, please come set up shop here and make these things. You have to do you know, all three of the criteria. You have to 
you have to uh, produce the batteries here, you have to uh, assemble the vehicles here, and you have to uh, be active in the, in, in the inputs that go into those EV batteries. So that is, that is quite an extensive kind of continuum of not just assembly of, of the vehicle. It's not just what we have elsewhere in southern Ontario with just-in-time production or parts production that helps on both sides of the Canada-US border in terms of automobile and, and, and truck manufacturing. So, you know, this is, this is trying to, I think, uh, kind of swallow up uh, the entire continuum uh, of it all. Uh, and of course, you know, there's going to be many more questions after the initial uh, excitement of the, uh, of the incumbent elected officials. Uh, there's going to be lots of questions. That is, what are we doing uh, on things like the inputs? That is, the, the materials that go into uh, these vehicles. The other question is, and this is for the companies, uh, not, not necessarily for the government, but there seems to be somewhat of a difference of opinion on the EV uh, you know, future that, it, you know, we see some of the D3, the, the, the North American automakers uh, maybe holding off on some of their uh, embrace of, uh, of, of EVs. And yet you see other companies making making other decisions. So it, it's it's there's still going to be a lot, lots, lot, lots to play out. As I mentioned, things like uh, like the labor, uh, and, you know, and, and who's going to be building all these things. I think there's going to be once the initial euphoria wears off with Mr. Ford and Mr. Champagne, um, I think I think Canadians are still going to have lots of questions because we are putting up quite a bit. Yes, it's in tax credits, but it's foregone revenue um, that wouldn't uh, necessarily be there. And then, of course, we have to get into the politics of it, of course. Uh, David, that's what we do here on Monday afternoons. Uh, <laughs> will, will the other federal leaders follow suit and say that they support these initiatives? Now, this tax uh, incentive uh, uh, bill hasn't passed yet. It's, it's in concept alone uh, right now. We see Singh. Uh, Jagmeet Singh out there still wondering whether you know we're still uh, pondering uh, whether or not to support the uh, the budget. I'm confident this budget will go through, but right now uh, I don't think uh, Mr. Trudeau has a dance partner to get it through. So still lots of questions. Yeah, I, I will see. I, I I find it difficult to believe the NDP will bring. Uh, a uh, I do too, down, but he's still uh, pondering. Or, or, yeah, no, I no, I, I I hear you. Uh, so Lisa, I think you're back and unfrozen. So so my question was like with the criticism from like you know incorporated family doctors and business communities and, and others and the tech sector, how does this help them in, in that larger pl uh, argument over a plan for the economy in the country? Sure, I, I will say two things. I think what the big auto companies have bought for themselves is optionality, meaning that if they are going to proceed with EVs, and I'm saying if, they may not have their business plans completely set up yet, but if they are going to go in this direction, if they are going to produce in North America, if the United States will accept that Canada is a friendly jurisdiction to make sure that you get imports from, all of those ifs come into place, then they have a really good deal with the Canadian governments to be able to go in and produce. I think that's what they're getting out of this announcement and what the federal government, the provincial government is getting, hey, look, people like us and we are gonna be the center of EVs. But we're a long way there. Mm. The other side of it is very real announcements on major changes, in my opinion, to capital gains, how it's gonna impact entrepreneurs and how it's gonna impact current corporations. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty right now. That is a fact, yep. that is true, that is happening. The EV stuff depends on a lot of different factors before it actually crystallizes. There's a difference between an announcement and a shovel in the ground. No, that, that is a very good point. And, uh, and, and Rob, you know, uh, to Lisa's point, we don't know what's going to happen with the trade arrangement with the United States. We were just talking to Katie Simpson about Donald Trump going on trial. Every indictment seems to bring him closer to the White House in a perverse sort of uh, math of American politics. But, but Honda, I guess, if they do set up in Canada, even if there are issues with the U.S., there's still trade agreements with Europe and with Asia that helps them to some degree uh, with this, which may be one of the reasons why they're looking at Ontario because of CETA and uh, CPTPP and all these other arrangements. What, what's your sense of it from, from Queen's Park? Well, I mean, and certainly, I mean, Premier Ford likes to talk about how uh, all there are six major automakers uh, in, in Ontario now, uh, in, you know, the Detroit mm -hmm. 3 plus, plus Toyota and, and, and Honda. And it's it's they're just Volkswagen. very like and Volkswagen now and that's the newest one Volkswagen where the one in St Thomas Ford was saying this morning Premier Ford was saying this morning that, that, that it'll be the fourth largest building in the world David sixteen thousand square feet so that's a lot of uh, economic um, uh, activity now one thing that I know at Queens Park they are a little bit concerned about is if there is a change in government federally 
Um, the, the Pierre Polyev was pretty lukewarm about the Volkswagen deal last year, and that, that did not go over very well with Doug Ford's uh, inner circle. They were not impressed uh, with the federal Tories, even though they're progressive conservatives at Queen's Park, they're federal, they weren't impressed with the federal Tories not being necessarily there for uh, the EV auto sector in the future. So that's something to watch. If the taps, if, if, if they decide to turn the taps off, that could change the dynamic a lot in this province. Yeah, it feels like that's a two-way lack of mutual admiration arrangement, yeah. uh, uh, Rob, uh, between the federal and provincial cousins there on, on a lot of these key issues.